time that these two teams will meet this split. Current record is 3-0 to zero in favor of Fnatic, and they want to try hold that 17-0 win streak over SK Gaming. El Clasico, I don't know about the Real uh, Madrid and Barcelona scores, but I don't think it's that one-sided. It's not quite yeah. that one-sided. <laughs> uh, but the, you know, despite that 0-17, we've seen some extremely good games between these two. But let's get into the bands then. First band coming out from Fnatic was Kale. They banned out Thresh as well in their second pick. Twisted Fate and Nasus here aimed towards Fnatic. So taking out Twisted Fate for Xpeke and Cyanide with the dock. So you've got the direct targeted bands, you know, the support, jungler, and then of course the mid laners. They don't want uh, Ocelot to get his Kale, who we played earlier in the day and did very, very well with. And you obviously don't want Xpeke being able to backdoor you with that Twisted Fate pick. So Zed is still available. Volibear is here. We have not seen him in the first three games of the day. And he's just been banned out. His Q was nerfed in this particular patch. So his low level speed increase from that Rolling Thunder is not as impactful. Yeah, and could be the reason why he's not really been featured much uh, or at all actually in our first three games up until now uh, with him being banned out. So let's have a look then what first pick is. There's a lot left open here. There is a lot of champions here. Shen is still available for pick if Kevin decides to go that route. We have seen him running Shen a number of times this weekend. Elise was the first lock-in for Fnatic, but in terms of all of the high priority champions, you have Zed that is still there. Uh, in terms of our junglers, this is going to be the interesting one to see because the the norms of Jarvan, Nasus, and Volibear are gone. gone. So we see Nautilus out of Evil Geniuses earlier in the day. We've seen Hecarim a number of times this this split. But in terms of your traditional junglers, the go-to ones, they're not there or available. Well, let's see then. It looks like we're going to be seeing a Janna virus lane picked up here from SK Gaming. I have to admit, wasn't expecting a Janna. No, now Janna's a, a support pick we don't see very often, but I know in the solo queue, high elos, AP Janna yep. is somewhat of a trend right now uh, in the sort of the platinum and the diamond queues. So I'm not 100% convinced it's going to be Varus on the, uh, Janna Varus the bottom lane. If it is, the synergy is great. That um, uh, Eye of the Storm, Janna's E, adds up to 50 attack damage at max rank, and Varus's ability scale of bonus 80 so incredibly well, so it will work very, very well if they do stick that combo in the bottom lane. So let's have a look then at the picks here for Fnatic. Urgot, just to bring up some statistics there, he's been played one so far in the European LCS, and he's won one game, which obviously means he's the best champion around, maybe. 100%, 100% <laughs> win-loss ratio for Urgot. We have seen Urgot two days ago in uh, North America. It was actually run in a Urgot Kale bottom lane, which was very, very interesting. So we'll see if this Urgot does get locked in. Fnatic have run Urgot in the past, and if this is going to be an Urgot Blitzcrank lane, the amount of swaps and then pulls is very, very scary. Yeah, uh, pretty ridiculous. It could be once they get to level six. You never know where you're going to land after <laughs> all that comes in. Uh, but let's have a look then what SK are going to be going for after this one. Obviously, uh, for me, jungle is one of the more interesting points in the picks here because of the bands that we've got. I'm very glad you said that because Fnatic have also shown uh, with Elise there, Elise could be in the jungle. Elise could be in the top lane. Elise could even be support in this particular situation. I don't know if XPK actually likes to play her, so I wouldn't put my money on her being in the mid lane. With Blitzcrank being locked in and Leona still available, we've already seen Soaz running Blitz once this split. It was, of course, to counter Evil Geniuses in a, in a very targeted type of composition, so the possibility is there. Over on the other side for SK Gaming, they've got a lot of decisions to make. If they're going to stick to the trend of allowing Ocelot to counter pick, we're going to see the jungler and or mid slash top laner being locked in right now. Well, let's see. Currently Rumble and ooh, Irelia and Shen. So that's going to be Irelia top lane and Shen in the jungle for her Q-Bot by the looks of it. Yeah, that's the way I would also work on it. And, you know, as a trend, SK Gaming, whenever they play red side, they almost always allow Ocelot to counter pick as his final champion to lock in. So um, if that is going to be the trend, they're going to see now who Fnatic decides to lock in as their last two and make some educated guesses. Interestingly, uh, Kevin is the only player that's currently running Irelia up in that top lane, pretty much internationally. This is a champion that has somewhat fallen off in Season 3, and Kevin just builds a completely tanky. Just goes, you know, Warmog, yeah. Sunfire, Randians, and pretty much relies on that Heat and Style true damage to be his only damage source. So Fnatic right now hovering over Mundo. Who now, he's not one of the more popular ones out there, but we have started to, we have been seeing him uh, uh, on regular intervals, I guess yeah. you can say, throughout the season. And while you can expect some different picks to come out for the jungle just due to the fact that we do have those bands in there, and there is an Ezreal as well. So that's going to be AP Ezreal for Peke. That's, that, that's my first guess. That's going to be Mundo in the jungle. 
Elise top lane with an Urgot Blitzcrank bottom lane. That's where my money would go for this particular comp. What Fnatic have done is they've got a little bit of everything. They've got very tanky champions. They've got very mobile champions with Elise, with Mundo, with Ezreal. And then they've got the displacement that can come from either Urgot or Blitzcrank. Those flash position reversal engages can be terrifying. And you can see with the look on Nif's face is this awkward grin of, we did not anticipate this. Like, what did we do? This was... You know, unexpected. And That's we'll straight out of the back page of Ocelot's playbook. <laughs> like, can't do that, can't do that, can't. Ah, there we go then. That's what lineup we're going for this time around. Um, but let's have a look then. What they're going to go with this time around. That's a big question. Where is that Janna going to go? Will it be the support for Varus or will Ocelot pick you up for that middle lane? Well, he's got a lot of choices available to him because uh, uh, there's a huge that array of champions. If he is locking in the Lux, it means he's going to be able to at least counter the likes of Blitzcrank, Mundo, Elise when they come in, land that light binding and, and hold them in place. But again, now for the SK side, you've got some pretty clear differences. Super tanky Shen, super tanky Aurelia, they're going to be very beefy and reliant on the initiations unless a good light binding actually catches somebody out. At the moment, Hercubot's sitting with jungle Aurelia, but I do expect that to swap. Some very, very interesting ones for this one. Fnatic, of course, 17 for zero in all LAN games against SK Gaming. Like we said, we call it El Clasico simply because the games have yep. been great that we've seen between these two teams. In terms of scoreline, though, not quite the most even matchup that we have here uh, in that LCS. For nice, of course, in the LCS season itself, three for zero against SK, with this being the last showing. And talking about that as well, even though the matches are always, you know, in favor of Fnatic winning, that's not how the game actually plays out. They bounce back and forth, and many, many times in the past, SK Gaming have actually been in the lead in the opening and, and mid game of the match. So we'll see if they can replicate it. Both teams have the ability to scale very well into the mid game as well as having good team fight potential. I do feel that there's going to be a lot of pressure on Nif's Janna. He's going to be very reliant on those Howling Gales to either cancel or interrupt those position reverses and also get rid of anybody that runs into range. Dr. Mundo has to quite literally run up to you and tap you on the shoulder before he can deal damage. And Janna's pretty good at getting rid of somebody like that. Yeah, and he taps hard if he manages to get to your shoulder, that's for sure. Um, but one thing that's interesting here, we'll have to have a look in game, Ezreal. So we saw earlier on in the season that Peke played a Caitlyn in that middle lane. Now, that you know, when you see Ezreal in there, you'd automatically think, okay, it's going to be an AP Ezreal. Um, but that may not be quite the case here. As I said, we'll uh, have a look later. He's running the flash cleanse at the moment, going up against uh, Ocelot's Lux in this middle lane. You see there the focus on both teams. Fnatic so learning, you know, concentrated but relaxed, I can think we can call it at this point. So there's quite a lot on the line. Fnatic, in order to secure a top two position, need to just pick up one win out of five games. And they'd like to pick it up right now. If they win this match, they are guaranteed top two and going into the summer split, going to semi-finals. They've picked somewhat of an oddball composition, and we've actually seen Xpeke running AP uh, Ezreal before in the past, and he's currently got no ability power on his rune page at the moment. 6% lifesteal, and he's gone... Uh, uh, oh, let me just scroll over here. There we go. Um, swapped over. Yeah, so same again. Armor penetration and uh, uh, attack speed glyphs. So uh, he's not AP. He hasn't ruined or mastered up for ability power, so he might be doing something... Different, like we've seen from that Caitlyn in the mid. But, of course, that could all change once we go further. That could just yeah. be for his pure power in that lane phase here up against Lux. We can see on your screens there, SK Gaming headed down on the bottom side of the Fnatic jungle. We'll see if they stick around for that one. Going to be a very deep invade towards going down on that south side curve bush, one up on the Wraith bush as well. So SK going to have a lot of vision here of that Fnatic jungle. The question is whether Fnatic at this point are going to go and try the same over on the top side. Fnatic have just gotten full vision of the SK lineup as they've walked over a ward. You can see that on the ping. So Fnatic have got the information advantage in this particular battle right now. They're going to try and get into position and there are some wards left for SK. So we may actually see a very exciting level one. Currently Fnatic have the positional advantage as well as the vision advantage because that ward that they had in the bush, they can see Nif. If uh, um, Enrated gets a good Blitzcrank hook, they might be able to pick up first blood. And this is a very tense start. Enrated's going to go. Oh, he's going to go for the hook and he will pull Nif through. There's what? an instant flash away from Nif. And wow, he was hovering over that button. You can tell the speed that he hit that there was 
top notch from Nif, just saved his own life. So he had to burn Flash to do that. What that means is if he gets caught out by a hook in lane, he is going to go down. He has no safety now in order to get away. We did see Enrated burn his Ignite in that particular engage, so they did trade Summon Spell for Summon Spell, but you'll gladly trade that escape ability of Flash over Ignite. And they've caught Candy. Candy Panda getting hooked in there as well, and he will have to burn his Flash just to get away from that side. There's a queue of yellow star already connecting in, so Flash has burnt for both Candy Panda and Nifia. This is not the start they were looking for. As you can see, Herculebot has stolen that red buff away now. We'll see Fnatic with Mondo go into the top side of the SK jungle to try and do the same. Very well played by SK. They actually come out better in this situation because they've lost. Uh, they actually, did they lose red buff? I'm trying to see. Yes, so they did lose red buff as well. Traded it back and forth, but they've got positional advantage and the pressure's now on Yellowstar and Enraged in the top lane. As we see Herculebot level two, can he get the taunt onto Soe? Soe does have flash available and blows that very early. Yeah, was trying to dodge there from Herculebot, but in the end decided using the flash was going to be safer at that moment. I apologize for uh, wondering if Mundo's going to take the red buff from the SK. So he'd already taken it yeah. uh, that little bit earlier on from that one, just so that we're uh, up to date with that. There's another pull. Going to land in onto Nif. No flash available. Exhaust. Exhaust goes down. Have they got enough damage? One more Q. There it is. First blood by Yellowstar going very low. Candy Panda goes in. Final auto attack will get the kill. But Cannon Rated, he's surely not got the damage here as Blitzcrank. Going to do a lot of damage there, but not quite finish off. 1-1. One, one. So they trade one for one. First blood does go to Urgot. And what I was trying to say is that in this particular matchup, Urgot needs to get ahead and stay ahead. If he starts falling to the Varus Janna lane, he's not going to be able to get tanky enough to survive the damage, and you need to have a tanky, beefy Urgot in this situation. He's trying to rush what looks like a Brutalizer, as the Rocket Grab just misses there from Enrated. And just flashing by Candy Panda, obviously ready for that one, as Herculebot will be taking his first blue of the game. Obviously, he stole the red buff away from Fnatic in reaction to his own red buff being taken earlier. Mid lane, 19 to 16 here. We did see the Elixir plus Pot start coming out for XPK, and there is the first pink ward of this game going down for Enrated to clear out Vision of the Tribush. The pink war has begun between supports, and we'll see who can control the Vision. XPK with Ezreal in this mid lane against Lux has the ability to actually deal damage even if he gets caught by a Light Binding, depending on the distance between himself and Ocelot. And of course, that Mystic Shot range is particularly good. So we'll see how he continues to skill up that Ezreal and build, but at the moment he's preferring his Q over his W, which does make you think it might be an AD build. Yeah, exactly my thoughts from that one as well. Down in uh, the, the pink wall, as we talked about earlier on. Nif wins that miniature Ooh. battle as we are going to see the pull coming here on towards Candy Panda. He's going to be locked on, but do they have the damage to finish off? Yellowstar just backing away. Howling Gale comes in. Barrier. There is Barrier used, and Yellowstar now the one in trouble, but they've backed away Ignite. from him. Ignite comes down. The shield come out from Janna, and that's surely going to save Candy Panda. Really tense stuff here in this top lane. Ladies and gentlemen, a Classico is here and it is delivering already. One to one, both AD carries are low. Exhaust and Flash is burned for Yellow Star, but Enrated does have his Flash available. Herculebot was putting himself in a position to maybe pick an engagement, but he decided to back away. They know that Fnatic do not have vision of that Tribush, and thanks to Candy Panda's potions and getting some additional HP back with those Doran's Blades, he is sustaining better than that of Yellow Star, and that's obviously going to play into his favor. Insane start to this one, as we'd probably expect from El Clasico. As I said earlier on, we've seen this mid lane now. Peke got the advantage in terms of mana here. Ocelot's running dangerously low with that one. Does have a fairy charm for a little bit of regen in there, but it's already going up towards a 10 CS lead uh, for that Ezreal in there. As Kevin here going to go on towards Soaz, gets the stunning, dashes away. Well played by Soez, landing that cocoon, immediately dissipating the amount of pressure that could come down from Kevin's Aurelia. And it's a lane matchup we haven't looked at too much right now, but Soez is falling behind. He's 15 creeps behind that of Kevin's Aurelia already, and his lane is actually pushing. So I imagine he's spending more time focusing on last hitting, trying to get that neurotoxin down onto Kevin, than he actually is spending on CSing, and that may come back to bite him in the butt. One thing that we've not really seen is the junglers. They've been very, very quiet up until now with the Cyanide on Mundo. Herculebot on Shen spending a lot of time getting themselves farmed here in the jungle. So we'll see how, uh, once they start to make appearances on these lanes, how that one is going to go. Uh, Zen Raider just getting some wards down. The pink ward in that tribush obviously means that he doesn't want to risk going into that one. And we saw earlier on, you know, we can never underestimate the power of that Janna shield as well as we are going to see Soas here putting down good damage onto Kevin, but no kill. 
very well played there by Soas as well, timing his cocoon and his attack perfectly with the entire minion wave sitting there to back him up. So he got all that additional free damage. And Rated and Yellow Star sitting on level 4 right now to the level 5 and 3 of Nip. So there's that little disparity. So is going to go on Kevin. He's going to go in there again. Well, has he got the damage? Didn't really have the mana to keep that one up there. But every little bit helps in a lane, one versus one lane like that. If you can force someone to back, you're already doing a good job of things. As Herculebot will be getting that red buff here on the top side. Of course, was stolen away for the first time, which forced him to reactionary go over to the Fnatic side of map and take theirs. Yellow Star along with Henry to just make sure that they don't miss a single bit of CS there underneath that tower. There's a grab coming out. Doesn't like that. So Nip playing Jan has got the benefit of the passive and we see they've gone onto Candy Panda. Gonna start chasing those corrosive charges down. Oh, but can he put the damage out that he needs here? That's the range of that when you're locked on. is obviously the uh, big advantage that you've got. The Yellow Star can back off a little bit but still put out that damage that Barris can't. So what you've seen in the wasn't needed in the end, they got that kill, and that will be a one for zero for Fnatic, at least for now, because Kevin is chasing him down towards Cyanide. Can they lock him up? Yes, Kevin gets that kill. There's a repel coming out from Elise, but Yellowstar now is in trouble as well. There's Candy Panda hammering away from them. He's going to be exhausted. That will save him for a while, but it's a double kill for Kevin as they chase off towards Xpeke. He will try to get away, but get slow double times on this. Has to cleanse that one off, and he's still trying to run here from Candy Panda, no mana. who's still giving chase. Yeah, indeed, no mana left here for Xpeke. Can he escape? Ocelot gonna come in from the side of this one. There's the laser. It misses, but it won't matter. It's Nip that picks it up. They managed to pick up one for three in that trade. Fnatic Blue, so many spells and ultimates and abilities just to get Herculebot out of the engagement. Yeah. And that just meant that Kevin and Candy Panda had a free ride to clean house. Because of all the work that SK did in this bottom lane, Candy Panda is going to pick this tower up for free and without any threat of reprisal. He's just going to pick it up and back away. Great, great play for SK Gaming. They take a commanding lead right now as far as gold is concerned. And in terms of the team fights, they're in a stronger position, but they want candy. Has Candy Panda overstayed his welcome. You can see a speedy Mundo coming in from that top side. One spear, one axe will be enough there. It just ranges out before it can land and he will walk away. Jano coming to do a bit of safety work on him as well. SK leading in the kills right now at eight to four. And so has burnt his flash for that as well. So he literally used everything possible to try and catch Candy Panda down. Very, very good team fight for SK. And if Fnatic continue to use all of their abilities on the tank, on the support jungler tank, they will lose the engagements. They need to kill either Kevin or Candy Panda in those engagements because Ocelot, they can survive his burst. He's not as much of a threat to them as the constant auto attack that will come down from the other two. Well, I would agree with you about 20 seconds ago, but now he's picked up that Ravenon's death cap might change things somewhat. Uh, but you're totally right in that last one. I mean, Herculebot, yes, he died, but he soaked up so many abilities from it that SK were like, well, they've got nothing to killers right now we can just chase them down and do exactly that and the chasing power of two blade of the rune kings light binding plus the blade surge as well as the equilibrium strike from aurelia her q and her e plus the slow from janet and the knockup that's a never-ending chase team that can literally stick to you wherever you are because every single one of their teammates or abilities has some form of crowd control or slow in their back pocket so let's have a look at some of the other items being picked up now. Giant Spell and the Warden's Mail coming out for Irelia. On the other side, we are going to see another Giant Spell. Well, I say another Giant Spell, the first Giant Spell for Shen added into it there. Haunting guys for with that trade. Baron Nasher is about to wear out for them if I look at the buff timer. And that just means they've positioned themselves very nicely. That at the, by the time the next Baron respawns, they'll still have super minions in this bottom lane. Dragon taken by XPK as well to add to that gold uh, total. It's almost a 500, uh, 500, 5,000 <laughs> gold lead. 500 uh, wouldn't be that impressive. Um, but they're certainly in the driving seat for this one. A lot of. So if he gets the GA up and running, he's got that extra lease on life that he can come back to life and use the, the position reversal either pre or post GA proc. So I like to pick up from him once he gets enough money. Yeah, and the thing is, they always pull someone in there right at the start. So he's kind of the second line there when they start to get involved to pull that position reverse route and disable someone for that amount of time to see if they can get through the uh, attacks. With Henry to be charging up through the jungle, stick to ward down. The ward, if that had come out like a second or two earlier, he would have actually seen Nif and been able to go for the rocket grab, but he didn't actually have vision of Nif. 
The rest of Fnatic, they've completely zoned out SK. They pick up their seventh tower of the game. Super Minions are pushing down the bottom lane. It's about to get onto the Nexus. And Herkybot is the man that has been said, defend the base, man. You need to do this. The rest of Fnatic, they want to fight up top. Now we saw Kevin trying to get in there for that one, but they can't afford to do something uncoordinated here. From SK's perspective, it's got to be perfect as the hook comes in. Not quite landing, though. Let's pick it, gets another couple of hits off onto the turret. The people in the audience all clinching in unison. Ooh, as that rocket grab almost catches up. For the time being, Fnatic have got this tower down to half, and they continue the pressure. The amount of sustain that peke has got with that Bloodthirster and the Blade of the Ruined King means whatever tower damage he takes, he simply heals it back off the minions. Enrage is going forward and look for the grab. Can he hook anybody? They're going for the second inhibitor, and he still hasn't used that ability, but SK, they've picked the fight. They're going to go in for this one. Cyanide will use that Randwins, but where is the kills going to come? Oh my god, Nif just knocked them out of position there of the laser. There is a position reverser coming in from yellow star you can see how tanky is as a true shot barrage comes across candy panda falling very low kevin low and rated low everyone's low in that middle of the fight there well you can see fanatic are the ones being chipped away at double kill coming out for varus peke gonna try and escape he will take down varus but the rest of the team come in after a bit of healing there for kevin he's gonna try and chase out ocelot is there with him as well can they catch up with mundo can they catch up with soaz here and well it doesn't look like it for now but that laser is going to be coming off cooldown here in just a second. Ocelot may choose to use that on the top side here. He's going to need more than just the laser. Ah. Cyanide's got 1,200 HP. The rest of SK are trying to position. They think Baron's coming up, and it will be in three seconds. Will Cyanide stick around? The end of that engagement was a one for three, and Kevin just went ultra mega man mode. He took on three members of Fnatic alone. Not only did he survive, he picked up the fight. Dr. Mundo wants more. Can he steal? Cyanide is probably famed for more Baron. <laughs> steals than any other jungler in the scene, but he doesn't have flash to get in there. We'll see if he's going to decide to go in for this. Well, there is a ward there at the back, and it looks like he is going to pop the his ultimate. ultimate. He's going to go in for it. Oh, he's not quite getting it, and that will surely be his life coming in from this one as well. He is pretty damn tanky, though. He's trying to get away from it. Super minions are on the base, and now Soez is going to run interference. If they can delay enough for super minions to pick up one turret, that is going to be a very big victory. Unfortunately, Soez does decide to back away. He's not finished just yet, though, as in rated. Now joins the party. Soez has interrupted the recall. Varus is left alone to defend the Nexus turrets while the rest of Fnatic keep the pressure on. This game is far from over because SK had the, the advantage of Baron buff if they continue with the team fights. There is Candy Pan who done a good job there of keeping those super minions off. Let's have a look at the Nexus turrets here and see how low they actually got during that one. You see the right hand side one is down very, very low. So no, obviously they are going to be reaching, but not exactly at lightning pace uh, from that one. So SK need to stall here for as long as they can. And crucially, the inhibitor respawned on the bottom lane. So it's bought them more time that the only lane with super minions once they've killed off the last few will be the top lane. And you've got that little bit of, of respite, a little bit of breathing room in your base to know that minions are not simply going to be bashing on your Nexus turrets. What we do see from Fnatic is all of those chain vests. Look at how much armor they are all stacking up. They are more afraid of Kevin and of Candy Panda than that of Ocelot because they feel that they can position correctly or they can allow Nif's Howling Gale to knock him to safety when that final spark comes down. Yeah, that was not the uh, the best coordinated uh, ever, but actually SK, you know, they probably would have won that fight a lot earlier if that laser had actually connected at the time that it did. But we're talking about now a barrier and up SK Gaming, and as such, Fnatic, you could probably have expected that. They're not pushing in quite so heavy right now. They're happy to soak up as much from the jungle as they can, push these lanes out constantly, and then wait until that Baron has timed out, and maybe look for that all-important pick again. Even stealing away the red buff. So now that they've got super minions in their opponent's base, and they've got vision advantage, look at all those Fnatic wards near and around the red buff. It's just going to allow them to control that side of the map. Peke has waited out this dragon pit for the full 30 seconds it took to spawn. He didn't quite have the exact timing on that, but nevertheless, he's going to take that away, increase that goal lead to a mere 4,000, which at this stage in the game is practically nothing. Everybody has sort of hit critical points in terms of their items and uh, every little bit is of course going to help. We do see Yellow Star's Guardian Angel has been picked up so he may actually be more of a factor in these team fights because he hasn't offered all that much outside of being a, a, a target to be shot. 
And one thing we didn't talk about is the quick silver sash in there for Varus as well. And you know, you look down that Fnatic team, and as the AD carry, you pretty much need a cleanse or the quick silver sash in there. Yeah, and it's also one of those things that now Yellow Star can effectively not target Candy Panda with that flash position reverser because of how powerful the, the QSS is. So Candy Panda's got that room of safety. He's had that for quite a while, but he hasn't quite been in a position where it's been the difference between life and death just yet. At the moment, the rest of Fnatic, they're stacking up pretty much around this top side of the jungle because that's where most of their vision was accumulated. They knew where SK was because they've even got... Uh, those are SK wards in the bottom half of the jungle. And they're just, just playing it out slowly and passively. I imagine they just want to wait out the Baron buff to wear away before they pick a big fight. Yeah, and uh, SK from their side, they'll be wanting to make sure that that inhibitor comes up without them losing that one in the bottom lane, or maybe even more importantly, this inhibitor turret in that middle lane. That's surely a vital one for them, as we are going to see now them going in. Kevin actually diving right into the middle of the team. Stan United going to come out as well. The Randuin's going to be popped. The laser will hit three from Fnatic. Yellow Star going low. Are they going to chase off to try and finish up? Look at Candy Panda. He's full HP as Yellow Star's Guardian Angel gets popped, but they finish him straight off after that one. And Fnatic, after all that waiting, didn't wait long enough for the Baron buff to go down. And that's what I almost don't understand from that. They managed to secure the tower. x has been knocked up. The slow is there. And Kevin, he might be able to get the slow. The Cocoon slows him down. Running in still, though, here is Ocelot. He's going to get more damage in SK. of force Fnatic right away. Here comes a true shot barrage across. And it will not help off SK, who... Finally, now that Baron buff has run out. SK are so healthy after that entire engagement, but there are super minions on their top lane inhibitor, which has respawned. Fnatic are just trying to interrupt them as much as possible to see if they can buy time for the minions to do the work. Luckily, Hercubot has been able to recall and get to safety. But again, we see one of the situations where SK, they win the team fight, but because of how little map control they have, converted to anything. They can't even take their own buffs because they spent so much time in their own base. Pushing out this bottom lane, they don't want to let Fnatic have the chance to get in there and get rid of that inhibitor another time as there is a ward cleared out. And Fnatic obviously did a decent job of clearing the top side last time. SK, though, after forcing them back, have said we need vision back, we have to have vision in all sides of that jungle. They've managed to do that on this top line, uh, on this top side, at least with a almost a line defense of wards coming down to spot those Fnatic positions. Baron is up in two minutes' time right now. SK, of course, have the perfect timing down on that one. Fnatic as well will have seen it because, of course, Cyanide did go in there to try for the steal. So they, they know roughly what the time is, and very crucially, both of Elise and Ezreal still have their GAs up and available. So even if they pick another big team fight, they'll have both of those damage-dealing sources have the ability to respawn. Previously, Yellowstar was, you know, caught in no man's land, surrounded by four members of SK, and the rest of Fnatic weren't really in a position to team fight that, which is why he died even after that uh, ability was, was used or the GA was used. So in this particular situation, it's going to be almost like a seven versus five. We do see that the Führer boots have been picked up for Xpeke. So just going to give him those that temporary movement speed boost while he's auto attacking his targets. Which for Kaitin is always a bit of a bonus to have in there. What else have we had picked up here? Static Shiv added in for Varus, which, you know, when you've got lanes pushing against you, that Shiv is definitely not a bad item to have in there. No, not at all. It's it's slightly different because Varus has got pretty good wave clear with his piercing arrow and his hail of arrows. So we do tend to see Phantom Dancer, especially when you consider he's got an Infinity Edge as well. But I feel like uh, Candy Panda may be in a position where he's he's under pressure. He doesn't have enough mana to finish off the likes of a Phantom Dancer, and he's going to get that additional damage, that additional statistics that wow. the Static Shift gives you right now. And, you know, in a game that's this close and this tense, that little bit of magic damage may actually be the difference between securing a kill and, you know, going down yourself. 20 or scratch that, 15 seconds until that Baron is back in play. Fnatic starting to move in there. We have Shen in the top lane here with Hercule Bottom. I have the feeling we're going to see a lot of jockeying for position, Thanks. and Soaz going to get hit with a lot here. The ultimate comes down from Varus, but well, there is the Repel coming in. Are they going to commit to this one? Kevin right in the middle, Soaz going low. Where is the laser from Ocelot? There it is. It lands only on Cyanide, not the target that it needed to hit. As we are seeing Fnatic starting to push SK back, Soaz though will have his Guardian Angel pop. The focus turns on towards Yellow Star. There's the pull on to Ocelot. Lot, who's going to go straight down in this one and that will be a one for one up until now but is this one over howling gale comes across the knock and rated in the air kevin is still hanging around from this one and fanatic havoc's peke who's got the oh. ga oh a flash away there 
from that grab by Varus. And what is the plan now? There's a true shot barrage coming over. Our Fnatic gonna look to push straight down this middle lane. And Rated is the one zooming in there. Of course, there are no inhib turrets left alive from this one. Looks like Enrated may try for the they grab. And he pulls Kevin in there. He will get destroyed out by Soaz. And the rest of SK now definitely not safe, but Fnatic more interested in taking the inhibitor. And that's a four versus three. They are low on it. How it kind of develops. Because you see, you know, SK coming from the side, they want to go for the engage. Unfortunately, Candy Petty misses his ultimate.